Alright, so I've got something a bit different for you guys today. I've recently managed to get off Lucinda, do a bit of stuff around the reefs there, as well as an inshore trip off Townsville. So this first dive here was first thing in the morning. Sun's just pretty much just come up and we had roughly around two meters at viz at best. So this is just off the back of Magnetic Island, doing a couple of the isolated structures and wrecks sort of stuff. So these sort of areas do tend to get fished pretty heavily, so you don't always get too much around there. Um, this was the first time of me diving this particular spot, so sort of had a look down there, looking for your main species like your bar cheek coral trout, your finger mark, um, barramundi. It is currently off season for barramundi, so obviously it wasn't going to take any of them. And then, of course, you've got cods all around, just like you saw that one, just sort of shoot off there. So on little spots like this, you sort of just want to check around, go up and down, try to figure out if there's anything around. And just there, you can sort of see something shoot off the side there. Whether or not that was a barramundi or a cod, it was hard to say, but um, the GoPro footage actually makes it look a little, little bit more bluer than what it really was. And so anyways, after a couple dives on that spot, we decided to move to the next spot, which was a shoaly reef, just a little bit further out. We were diving between 12 and 14 meters and on this first dive here, I sort of get down to the bottom. There was a bit of a thermocline, but we did definitely have better viz, three to four meters at best. And on the bottom there, you can sort of see there's a bit more life. A couple of juvenile red emperor, still big cods sort of getting around. And that's sort of a good indication that, you know, you might see other species like your bar cheeks, your finger mark, and occasionally you do get crayfish around here. So um, on dives like this, you sort of want to just cover as much ground as you can, just keep moving forward or you can sort of stay in the same spot if you'd like, grunt, make some noise, but um, for this day I was sort of just trying to find isolated bombies and by doing that I was just working in certain directions, trying to find stuff and then we just moved the drop weight to suit where the fish sort of were. So after a couple dives we sort of found a little bit more structure and just here I'm just sort of moving around, checking if there's any craze around that might be able to be taken. So. Um, it does tend to be a little bit difficult on these spots to sometimes find fish, but um, the more ground you cover the better. So in this case I'm just clearly going straight, trying to cover as much ground as I can. Come across a couple of fish there and there was a decent bar cheek that I was sort of eyeing myself out. Eyeing off, sorry. Um, and then he actually led me straight to this crayfish. You can sort of see his just poking out the side there and then I go for the grab. Luckily for me, he couldn't really escape anywhere, so I went and got him out. That ended up being the first fish of the day for me, so I was pretty stoked about that. Don't always end up getting too many craze off here. After mapping out a bit more of the ground, we sort of came across this set of bommies that were coming up to around that 8 to 9 meter mark straight off the bottom. And first thing when I got down, there was just all these pelagics, queenfish, golden trevally. Really good sign that there's potentially lots of bait. Um, fish like your bar cheeks and your finger mark would still potentially be hanging around here. So I'm on the bottom sort of hoping that something a bit better might come past. They're generally not the first sort of thing that you want to take. Um, inshore, you don't always see as many fish as offshore obviously, but on the bottom here, I'm just sort of hoping that potentially a bar cheek might come across. There are a few little ones there you can sort of see just hiding in between that crack, two or three, just all undersized unfortunately. And so those, G those golden trevallies ended up coming back and I decided, well, we're overnight camping at the islands and we do need food. So I did end up just shooting this one. Managed to get a pretty good holding shot, pretty much stopped him. Sort of think it got it straight through the eye. And uh, yeah, after that, he sort of became our dinner and lunch while we were camping out. And um, then we just did a couple more dives on this spot. This was just on the other side of that big bombing you saw previously and I was sort of hoping a finger mark would come around and luckily for me that was literally what came out right here. Put a perfect shot in him, um, stoned him straight away. And this actually happens to be my first finger mark ever so I don't do a whole lot of inshore stuff so I was pretty stoked to have one ticked off and even though it was nothing big I think he came in 54 centimeters or so. I was pretty stoked that just clean shot and had to get my first one. After that dive we decided to move back to the islands, look for a couple more craze. We just went to Havana, just near the Great Palm, and first thing, just a short dive I did while the boys had lunch, I managed to pull this little cray out. Uh, nothing too big, but we did cup, um, come across a couple, lost a few, which was unfortunate. We came across a lot of females as well, so it was good to see that they're obviously a lot breeding, but um, 
sad to see that I guess a lot of the males are being taken and obviously consequently lots of females being left around. So on this dive here I'm sort of looking around, still looking for craze and I come across this massive bar cheek just sitting under that ledge. I tried to sort of go after him without spooking him but he pretty much spooked the moment he saw me so he was sort of gone um, in a second there. And yeah so Nate came across this prey, managed to get him but had eggs so we just let him back, um, let him go back to whatever he was doing, whatever she was doing, sorry. And um, yeah, then came across these two. And by the way, you can see they've sort of got their tails curled up. You can sort of tell they both had eggs, so we just left them alone. And uh, on this dive here, we were trying to stay in that deeper stuff between that 10 to 12 meters. Just generally find better fish around those sort of spots um, in the case that they obviously haven't been heavily fished. And just here, you see lots of sweet lip, but you're not really seeing your main target species. After a night sleeping on the islands, we were sort of ready to get up in the morning and send it to the next sort of area. So we decided to leave Banner. Um, we originally went back to the same Shoaly Reef ground that we started with the day before, um, just because we knew that there were, had been promising fish there um, yesterday. So we were sort of hoping that we'd come across a couple more. And on this first dive here, I had come across this gray mackerel. You can sort of see him, he came out out of that shadow just there and I put perfect stone shot in him again. Um, seemed to get really lucky with the stone shots this trip and he ended up being a good eating size, nothing too big, but I was just happy to get another fish in. So um, that was a good start. And a couple more dives later, I'm just sort of diving around, trying to figure out where fish might be. Um, the best thing you can do with this sort of stuff is, you know, map it as best as you can, figure out where the fish are holding and why they're there, if there's bait or whatnot. And I'm um, on this dive here, I'm more, more or less just doing that and just having a little bit of fun, trying to see if anything will come in after I've just shot that mackerel. So, just checking in through this. You can see there's still lots of juvenile reds, Moses perch, um, key species like that, just always a good indicator. That little bar chick on the bottom there as well. Um, I don't think I see anything on this um, dive actually. This was one of the ones that I sort of just saw nothing. So I came back up and you can see all that bait sort of rushed through. So that's clearly what all the mackerel was sort of chasing after as well as those GTs and queenfish. And I think this was the last dive of the day for me, I sort of went down, I was just hoping I'd get one last good fish just to end it for me. Um, fortunately enough for me, I did end up doing that, so you sort of see on this dive, I go down to that original spot and I'm sort of curious what might just be hanging off these little bommies, just a little bit off this big bit of structure where most of the fish were hanging off of, so I sort of went in this direction, just checking it out, looking if anything will come in. and. Um, it is pretty barren at times and obviously the coral life is pretty bad lots of the corals dead unfortunately so but at least there's still fish around and um, on this spot here i think i'm just sort of trying to lay low see if anything might swim past and just out of curiosity come towards me and just on this bomb here i just come across these two finger mark noticed that one was a little bit bigger than the other and just went in and took a shot uh, luckily for me, I pretty much got another stone shot in there, just hit that spine. You can see he sort of just yeah, had to give up straight away. So surfaced and brought him up, and that was the last dive of the day for me. Um, and overall, pretty good trip for me to do inshore. And so now we're on to the next bit of footage. So this was off Lucinda. This isolated bombie right here, that was the sort of stuff that we were looking for just in the middle of the reef. And just on this dive here, you can sort of see there's um, a little red well, which was just happened to be just over legal so I was sort of eyeing him out thinking well he looks reasonably sized nothing too big though and I'd never shot a red emperor before so this was potentially the first time I'd have a chance at it. I lined him up just thinking whether or not he looks sized and after he sort of turned on me like that I decided yeah he looks like he'd do so I took the shot um, sort of reefed me a little bit and Believe it or not, he actually ended up coming exactly 55. He was about 55 and a half centimeters. So even though it was nothing big, I was just pretty stoked that first off, I didn't shoot anything I was undersized and that this fish came home illegal. So it was my first red ticked off and I was really happy about that. And after this dive, then we went on, we kept doing this bomby hopping stuff around the reef. We came across a couple of jacks, some coral trout, and one of the other boys landed two other red emperors. I think one ended up being 59 and the other one 56 or so. 
So this dive here, this is a sailfin snapper. You don't really generally see them around too much, but I managed to put a great holding shot in this one, straight through the cheek and sort of um, just, yeah. Luckily he didn't read me too bad. And that red there, that ended up being legal. One of the boys went and shot him a little bit after. That was the 59 centimeter one. And so we ended up with a couple great fish and we were all just happy about all that. And yeah, anyways, I hope you guys sort of enjoyed this video. Something a bit different with the voiceover. If you give me some feedback, let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, thanks for everyone for tuning in and supporting me all the time.